Hey, hello fellow gunners, Tim here at the Reloading Bench. Today I want to talk about unmatched brass. Now, a lot of people tell you, uh, you know, if you want precision shooting out of your rifle, you need to weigh your brass or weigh the capacity. Uh, you know, if they equal out the same capacity in each brass. With the... Uh, different ways of uh, measuring your capacity. Some people use water, some people use water and alcohol, some people use uh, powder uh, or sand. Uh, but I want to show you the numbers. Nobody ever shows you the numbers that will be caused by and this is a Prop 2 video. Uh, there's more details that can be explored with this to actually show you the different capacities of each brass and the difference in velocities with the same uh, powder charges. I just want to show you what I found the last time I went to the range shooting my 308. Now, uh, let's get down to numbers. Now these are three different bullets, same powder charge, and these have all been weighed out. They were all weighed out, so they were just not thrown. They were carefully weighed for each load. Uh, so, okay, with this particular bullet, the first shot was 2365. The second shot was 2383. The third shot was 2367. The fourth shot was 2304. And the fifth shot was 2376, which gave us an average of 2352 with an extreme spread of 78. Okay, now if you'll go back and you'll look. Now, here's where I'm at fault with making this video without really showing you the brass that was used and weighing it. I wasn't even thinking of doing this video, but after I was crunching the numbers and I'd already threw my brass in the tumbler, was, you know, that was my fault. I, I should have left them in the uh, ammo box in the order that they were shot so I could weigh each brass and show you what was going on or the capacity capabilities of each brass. But now the fourth shot was the lowest and the second shot was the highest. So if I'd had those two pieces of brass so I could show you what they weigh I could have proved a point, but I'm still hoping that I can prove a point by this. Now, this is Military Lake City Brass. And, uh, okay, you know, at different time periods, whatever. Well, I'll give you an example. Like, here's one for 02, I think it says. I don't know. I can't. can't see it. I was hoping the camera would focus a little bit better. Maybe it's 08, but you know, there's, there's one. And I'm just picking these up by random. This is a 73. I can actually see that one. Of course, you know, different years. Oh, and that's a newer one. That's a 2016. Okay. So there you go. I've expanded 40 years of, of brass making. Uh, so you know in that time period, uh, the brass alloy is going to change. The processes have changed. The machinery has changed. So that was just examples. I don't know if they coincide with these numbers or not. Like I said, I threw them in the tumbler and cleaned them before I uh, was getting into this. 
But now see that they gave me an extreme spread of 78. Now, we know there's other factors that could run into that, like the bullet weights may have been off or not, but I'm pretty sure all this boils down to brass capacity. Okay, now on my second loading, now here's where the proof's in the pudding. Uh, my first shot was 2376. My second shot was 2344. My third shot was 2382. My fifth shot, uh, if you'll notice, I got these in the little marks here. 2274. And the fifth shot was 2287, which, what is that? 13, grain, 13 feet per second difference in the last two shots. But now the last two shots, the first three were in military casings. And the last two were in these browning casings. This I know for a fact. What I'd done was I had run out of military and just grabbed these and said, there you go. We'll try them out. All right. So with that in mind, I have to move the camera. The extreme spread in the average of the first three shots. Yeah, right here. First three shots and the last two shots. Now this is an average extreme spread was 87. Uh, if I was to crunch the numbers even better, I could tell you that, you know, I'm sure that number is even higher from the actual numbers. But 87 feet per second difference in these commercial brass made by Browning and the military brass made by Lake City. Uh, that's just an example. But now here, here comes something I find interesting. Some of you might go, whatever, Tim, but I find it interesting. The next five shots for a different bullet with the same powder charge. Now, uh, this is 33 grains. This bullet is 33 grains heavier, but I'm using the same powder charge and Lake City brass. The first shot was 2244. The second shot was 2236. The third shot was 2236, which was a duplicate. The Fourth shot was 22.55, and the last shot, the fifth shot, was 22.49, which gave me an average velocity of 22.55, or 54. And you're seeing the numbers. If I say something wrong, you can see that. But the extreme spread was only 19. People, this is a great number for what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just shooting at a plain old hand-me-down rifle uh, and 308. This is all in 308. Of course, a lot of you probably guessed that with not me using military brass. But apparently, these five casings were more closer together in capacity than the ones previous, which has given me a better extreme spread. Then, too, a lot of you are going, well, it could be bullet design. You're saying this one's 33 grains heavier. That's going to make it. Yes, that will make a difference. But right now, I'm concentrating on the case capacity or the weight of the case. And I know for a fact this second five-shot grouping proves what I'm getting to. Because I know for a fact the last two commercial brass made by Browning and the first three were Lake City military brass. So guys, it does make a difference on 
the capacity and the weight of your brass. If you guys want precision shooting, you have to separate your brass. Uh, like eagle eye shooting has shown you there's ways to go from a half inch to a quarter inch group or an inch to a half inch group, guys. It can be done. It takes a little work. And for some people, they don't want to do it because they don't want to. And, it, and this is my fault. I, I do this part myself. I don't want to have to buy more brass to make sure that I have the capacity, equal capacity in my casings. So, but I should have enough that I can get close to what is needed. All right, I'm going to change some things around. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So here's the deal. Uh, I've already explained to you that I mixed up my brass. When I got home, I just threw it in the tumbler because, you know, I hadn't crunched the numbers yet. I had wrote them down, but I did notice on that particular one with the, with the Brownings, the Browning cases that they shot at the time when I was looking at it before I crunched the numbers at the range, almost 100 feet per second difference. So I, I made a note of that. So I made sure to grab those two casings. But the military, I wished I'd kept the three that was in the same lot, but I didn't. Okay, so... I have three military casings here from Lake City. Here's the uh, 2016, and it weighs a whopping 181.4 grains. Okay. Now here's the one from 73. And it weighs 180.6, 8, 180.8. Okay, well now these might not be good examples. <laughs> Watch these prove me wrong. All right, and this is the, uh, what wish I could read that. 09, 08, 08. 183.4. So it's two grains, three grains, two point something grains heavier than the lightest one. Okay. So that's that's not too bad. That's not too bad when you got, you know, a 308 casing. All right. But now we're going with the brownings. Yeah, look at here, uh, 158.9. So let's just say 159, okay. Uh, wow, that is 20, Twenty one grains, twenty two, twenty three grains heavier. I mean lighter. Right, and here's the other casing. There you go. One fifty nine point two. So there's four grains difference or point four grains difference in the brownings. And that's one reason why their numbers were so close. You know, and there's uh in the military ones, they were, uh, oh, I just got a thought. I was looking around to see what, what I've done with my other casings. Or two grains of difference. All right. Let's see what we got here. Here's one back in 85. I believe that's what that says. 85. It's 
that's way it. Wow, these are actually closer than what I thought. All right, here's another one in 16, another 16. Now, if I remember right, wasn't that 183? Oh, maybe it was 181. The last one. 74. 183. So see, there are two grains difference here. Uh, 181. That's a 2018. Yeah, 2018. There's a 73. I get another 73. 183. Another 2016. See, there's like two grains difference. Now, if I was to weigh the capacity, there's a 14, 2014, which is right in between the heaviest and the lightest. Another 16. Oh, look at here. That dropped all the way down to 180. Point seven, but the other one was one eighty three. Hey, sweetie, what's up? And I got a one eighty two. What is talking? I'm talking on the camera, honey. Uh huh. I'm telling people what I have found out. One eighty three. U.S. Did you just say U.S.? No. No. What is that? 113? No, wait a minute. That's not Lake City. That's a Winchester cartridge company. Yeah, 180. You guys get the point. So, uh, that's my findings. Uh, what was it? 20... 21, 23 grains difference in the, the commercial browning brass and the military brass. So, it makes a difference, guys. All right. I hope you found this interesting. I thought it was kind of interesting. I'm going to start weighing my brass. I might not go as far as Eagle Eye Shooting does with, uh, with the capacity thing because I don't do long range shooting all my shots are going to be within 200 yards probably even less than that so uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video Quacky Cletus made a video you all Tim's going to leave a link to his channel in the description